week. It was so wonderful that uh, Peter can't remember what the lecture was about. So, uh, Pete, don't worry, it's old age. It's fine. I keep being reminded of it all the time. Right, so uh, what, what we're going to do, we, we are setting stuff up in the background um, on YouTube. We have officially started. So, Case, what I want is whatever news you get from us this week, um, give us a bit of news, darling. Oh, shoot. You, uh -huh. Right. You know, you I don't, I don't, it isn't, it is, oh, I heard someone um, online. Oh, I found a channel called Little Knowledge. Do you know them? Welsh. I think <laughs> it's, it's a bit like our classes. Yeah, go on. Yeah, something like that. Except it's too. It's too. Well, I've only seen this little bit, but they were on about oh. Tredegar and the Morgans. So I thought, I oh, thought, wow. I got I thought I got to hear this, wow. and I need to go back and challenge them. They mention um, at some time um, evidence of Romans in the park, but I I yeah. had a look quick look online. I couldn't find anything, and. Right. And they pushed the date for the first Morgan being there to 1385, but no references. I got to get on their case about that. I, I need to know that stuff. But well, it's, it's, say... it's all very interesting. Right. They, they, they lost the, the Morgans had, a, had a, um, a fail in their fortunes when they supported O England, Dow, Glendur. And then they eventually they got, and I don't know what, what caused them to have a big financial problem, but that's when uh, Tudor times, I think he's, they, they got into privateering, buying um, well, shares yeah. in these ships, and they made a lot of money doing that. Well, don't tell me they were involved in slavery as well, because everyone else is. There, there was no mention of it where I was uh, reading that, so there might not be. That's a, a mention, I mean, I mean, a mention of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it anyway, might anyway. have been, but I think it was probably just more about the more about the pirating that they called privating. Yeah, yeah, pirateering. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Oh no, that 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 that's that's good stuff. Very good stuff. It is interesting. What? I've got to go back and watch these guys, all of their videos. I've got some like three videos about the Morgans. Oh, fun. I know. It's called the Little Knowledge Channel or something like that. You'll find them on YouTube. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. I'm, pretty, I'm pleased about that. Um, okay, then. Uh, you know you were mentioning about cholera. Yes. This is a bit of a joke, but it it, it, it doesn't turn out to be a joke, right? I, I used to... Um, in, in my Cardiff yeah. class, there, there was a place... That, that there's a woman um, that knows... Um, Peter very well and knows me very well. Uh, we won't mention that woman's name, will we, Pete? Um, and I, I, I went into this class one day and I said, um, I, I said, oh, um, oh, hang on a minute. I, I've just got distracted a sec. I, I said, oh, um, you know, I, I've been teaching about diseases and I've been teaching about plagues. Um, and and I said, I, I, I made a, I made a, a joke. I, I said, oh, uh, we were, we were doing, we were meant to be doing cholera last week, and uh, everyone avoided it like the plague. And this one <laughs> woman, hang on, hang on, this one woman piped up in the class, right? She said, uh, <coughs> and, and, and then, then it went a bit quiet, right? And I said, oh, there's, there's, um, there's a, there's a, there's a police song, which goes, I believe in catching cholera a thousand times a day. Actually, if, if, because he says it so fast, he's actually saying, "I believe in calling her a thousand times a day." But if you if you hear it in the wrong way, it's, and, and she said, "Actually, uh, that's not very funny because I've caught cholera three times." <laughs> I, 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 just, I, I just I just thought, right, I, I'm not going to make a joke like that again. Right, okay then. Right, um, okay, um, um, Richard. Any news from you this week? No, no, nothing of any. Uh... Any merits? I don't think. Okay, there's there's not a problem. There's not a problem with that. It's it's fine. It's fine. Um, right. Okay. Uh, Rich, uh, oh, Peter, you've got to tell us an update <laughs> with Flatto. What's happening with Flatto these days? Because you had you oh, had a, you had a meeting you had a meeting the other day, didn't you? So 
Well, yes, but there's a new new warden out there now at the moment and looking after the island. Yeah. He's not getting a lot of support from Cardiff Council, uh, right. but uh, we are still going out there on our working weekends, carrying out yeah. uh, jobs on the island to try and keep it up to scratch. Fantastic. Good on you. So, so the, the the thing the thing we all want to ask Peter is that um, you know yeah. what 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 is the funding like? Is 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 the National Trust interested in taking it over still? Or um... well, no, we've 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 gone in for a National Heritage Fund of a hundred and okay. uh, hundred and sixty thousand quid to help to uh, um, not restore but to uh, maintain the what's left of the Kohler Hospital. Oh yeah, about cholera, but yeah, yeah, that's and right. of course the uh, the the foghorn and the uh, water catchment area. Yes, because the water catchment area is quite unique. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we 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 actually mentioned that last week, Pete. Mm. You know, we, 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 this, this is, this is one of the things we mentioned last week about the catchment area, uh, the Victorian catchment area on, on, uh, Flatton. We, we, yeah. unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't have any. You froze. I want us to say that we're actually going to be looking at the bulwark today. We're going to be. Must be cold out there and must you keep freezing. <laughs> Everyone there? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Kept freezing. Yeah. Look at him. I you can see him. Doesn't he look beautiful? And those those are his two girls. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I tell you what, he's so he's so small, he don't stand a chance. They, they, he's mm -hmm. being bullied by the girls. Mm -hmm. And and we weirdly enough, we're finding out that um this breed of sheep, which is called the Borise Orkney sheep, from the island of the isolated island in Scotland, um, uh, none of these existed anywhere else in the world other than the island of Borise uh, on the mainland until uh, the mid 1970s. So, um, so we're we're very lucky to actually have three of these, um, and there's likely, from our latest readings, there's likely to be only and there's only under 500 of them on the planet. Right. So, um, I, I don't don't ask me how we managed to get hold of them. I don't know, but um, the people that wanted us to have the sheep wanted us to have them, so we, they they were collected. They were collected on the weekend from, guess where, Peter Cornwall. Oh. Uh -huh. So the, well, these certainly these look very much like a sewy ram. They they do look a bit uh, sewy-ish, but the the only difference mm. is Pete the colour. Hmm. Uh, uh, the soy the soy the, the, the females soy don't, but the male does. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah 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 yeah. No, that, that you you are correct. Um, so, so anyone who wants to ever come down and see my sheep are, are very, very welcome. And um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to go directly to my images. And there is we're going to be looking at, at the the bulwarks today down in Porth Kerry. And um this this is a handmade plan by a chap who used to uh, do plans for us this is actually uh what he used to do he used to he used to get um he used to, he used to get the royal commission on ancient, uh, ancient historical monuments in wales um he used to make these little things for us they're great so so what you are seeing is um a plan made in 1933 I would like to say that we actually, as an organisation in 2013, undertook a survey project of the coastline and of, of just the bits of 
the hill forts along the coast that were being eroded into the sea. And this was one site that we visited and we, we found out that the erosion since 1933 um, is quite acute. And what we do see noted on there is rescue excavations in 1938 by Jay, Jay Davis for the Department of Environment found indications of three of successive rectangular buildings behind the western uh, rampart, which is um, which is on the left there. That's the mm -hmm. western rampart. Um, and what we do find is obviously uh, Did he say where that is? Well, it's Kerry. Oh, right. I wondered if it was. Ah. <laughs> so that's is that's the one that's partially on the airport? It's up by the caravan site. Yeah. Right. Ah, where we had the cliff fall a few years ago. Yeah. You're the star now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you begin to wonder if he knows he's he's not here. <laughs> uh, completely gone you now. No, he's back. I'm back again. Is it oh. is the reception really bad today? Yes. Yeah. Right. What I'm going to do, I do have some feedback, so I'm just going to try and uh, mute a couple of you. Um. And so I've just got Richard on there. So if if I if I cut my video, so we're back looking at the images. I'm sorry about this. Right. Are we back again? Yeah, well, the image is anyway. Good. Right, so you can hear me, yeah? Yeah. Good. Any problems, let me know. So what we're talking about is, is one, one of the key points with lots of the hill forts throughout Britain in the start of the Roman era, which, which varies across Britain, but technically AD 43, when the Roman emperor... Claudius actually came over here. That's basically the start of the Roman era in Britain. Yeah. What well, what what we're usually told is that, that lots of these hill forts were assaulted and um, they they they. Hang on a minute. I've got a lot of noise. Um, when these hill forts, um, it said that these lots of these hill forts were assaulted and lots of people died and so on. But what what we do find is the evidence with these hill forts is that. There's no evidence to say that any of these hill forts were besieged by the Romans at all. And uh, that's what the evidence tells us. So in other words, what, what the Roman administration uh, indicated that these were no longer used. Um, and the reason why they were no longer used is for the civilian population. In the Iron Age, they were not required because the whole point of these Iron Age hill forts was that they were used as grain silos. They were used to keep animals with a small group of people. When the Roman civilization reorganized the landscape, there was no longer a requirement for these. So in most cases, they were abandoned for a short period. And then what we do see, they, they were reoccupied. So this, 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 is, this is what's going on. This is, was the evidence that we actually saw was excavated in 1968. The general, ex the general information that I'm going to read out to you um, is naturally um, what I've got in front of me. And then we're going to look at a load of images. And hopefully this is still sounding OK. So what we do find is that uh, on the on the left hand side, this is an arrangement of the banks. Um, and on the right hand side, the eastern side. That's the arrangement of the banks there. 
And what you can clearly see is probably up to a third of the site has been eroded into the sea over the over 2,000 years um, that it qualified as a hill fort or a, a bank and ditched enclosure. So this occupies a spur facing west and overlooking the now silted up creek of Porth Kerry. I love it when they use the word creek in regards to Porth Kerry. It's so much better than the word harbour or a cum creek. I like it. And a creek being something fed by water from the sea and also fed by water from rivers and streams. Uh, um, trapezoidal um, site, which is um, 250 um, along the north side and 230 meters north south. So it, it's, it's quite a chunky area. And it obviously tapers towards the south. And it's an area that today is around 10 acres um, in, um, in area. So a further, a, a further um, probably three or four acres um, has been eroded into the sea. The defences, which you do see overall, are quite spectacular uh, in on the uh, on the left hand side of the screen. Obviously, on the west hand side of the screen. But if you go and look in on the um, right hand side of the screen, uh, the east uh, side of the fort, um, that the, the the defenses can be quite spectacular there. But you actually need to find them because there's been a lot of erosion, particularly towards the south side. Now, what we do know at the bulwarks is that most of the banks and ditches on the northern side are occupied with yew trees, which have clearly been planted as a really beautiful yew tree plantation. But lots of these trees on the north side are over 100 years old. So uh, we would say that these were planted by the Romley family when the Romley family owned this area. Now, the last thing I heard was that um, uh, this belonged to Porth Kerry Estates. I don't know who it belongs to now. So the next thing, the next thing I want us to, the next thing I want us to examine uh, is the next image. Now, what you are seeing towards the south side of this uh, fort, uh, we'll refer to it as properly the bulwarks. This clearly shows a round hut and you can you can just make out uh, the marker a couple of the marker posts in there and actually what you do, you are seeing is a second hut behind so i when these were actually originally photographed was in 1989 and these images when uh, these images are, are going to uh, obviously be published, and I'm and another reason why I'm, I'm doing all these recently is so that I can just cut and paste the stuff and actually put it in the book. So that's good. So we're we're going to be using these, and I when I've been up to the bulwarks over a number of occasions since, I've never been able to see these circular marks ever again. I, I, I go up there saying to people, you know, if we go up there when the grass is a certain height, we can see these marks. Uh, we can see the round, uh, the, the 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 round buildings, and actually, when you do look at another plan, the buildings are not exactly round; they're sort of um, oval shaped. They're, they're more or less egg shaped buildings, which is quite unusual, rather than circular buildings. But oval buildings, that that type of thing, might structurally be um, a good thing, because oval buildings are stronger than circular buildings. Something that we don't mention. So these were actually taken. I got I got a date for this, the 4th of February 1989. So these were taken. Um, these were taken uh, um, nearly four decades ago. And by myself and a chap um, who was a friend of mine back there called um, Pablo Einan. So me and Pablo, Pablo Einan was my, my sidekick for a little time. And we used to go to these places. Now. The one, the one thing, the one thing that we do that 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 I do care to say is that when you go around the landscape 
of the bulwarks. You do actually see that um, back in 1989, it wasn't the, it wasn't the ones closest towards the, 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 the coast that were coming up as clear. It was actually some of the ones within the interior of the bulwarks as well. And these are actually pretty good images. And I will argue again that I've got these images from, from um, four decades ago. Any images that I've got that have been taken over since the digital age, either they've been uh, deleted or my software has been corrupted or I can't find them. But I can put my hands on these photographs straight away. What does that say about technology? People say it's the way you use technology. Well, if technology is being upgraded all the time and earlier formats are no longer used, how are you expected to keep up to date? For example, if I made a Betamax film of this hill fort, I wouldn't be able to access those Betamax tapes anymore unless I paid out a lot of money to get them put onto digital. And then VHS tapes is the same. So again, looking at these images um, as we see them is thanks to those years ago that I took these images in 1989. You can, you can see that there, can't you? That you can see basically, if you look, this is one of the ones in the interior. You can just about make out the outline, right? And these little pegs, you can just make out the outline there. Um, and that that's some of the wood that I nicked from my uh, dad's uh, garage because my dad dad's a carpenter. So you can basically see the curve on the right there and you can see another little line across a section of this. And this is one which is further inside the bulwarks. And I, I don't like referring to it as a fort because even though, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's got dip banks and ditches around it and it would have had uh, a defended gateway area. Um, when you use the word fort, you always think of like a, a military sort of um, site. It, it was definitely not military and it was for keeping animals and grain and all those types of important things to the people safe coming up to we're coming up to another image now uh, which is again another one cl closest towards um, the cliff line and look at that you can see clearly see the curve ditch nearest cliff on the caravan site side so this is over towards um this is over towards the uh, western um, side of the site and 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 again it sort of goes to show that in most circumstances you you can't see these things uh and now that we can that they're, they're it, it's clearly in front of you and i'm so pleased that i took these images when i did now to get an idea of of where we are and to get an idea of um, the, the world around what you, this is towards again, um, the um, Western side of the site towards the caravan park entrance. And this is again, looking sort of in a, um, from towards a North, um, northeasterly direction, isn't it? So, and this is what you can see is you've got the net, the, the cold map there, um, and a tiny little island in the distance there, which is Flatow, and and obviously looking out. This is not the view that the people would have had two thousand years ago. In fact, the view they would have had two thousand years ago. Um, would have been the angle would have been different because the coastline was further out and and obviously you know over towards the left the left hand part of, of the landscape uh, i think you might just be seeing the curve of barry island as it was back then again to give you a sense of context with this site and to give you a sense of the vista now, the next image that we're going to see has altered a great deal because they actually do maintain the trees. This is the, the bit that we can actually see next is actually 
um, over here. So where you've got the A and the B, if you go a little bit further north of this, we've got an image of, of one of the ditches and, and how acute the ditch is. So that's what we're gonna, that's where we're gonna go next. And there it is. So what we've got, we've got the bottom of the ditch there and we climb and we climb and we climb. And, and this, this itself for me is, is the most impressive part of the site. Again, on the Western side towards the caravan park. And you've got the bank and you've got the trees and you've got the ditch um, and you've got the, the wonderful sense of age and the wonderful sense being of age and the good preservation and you are able to see these today and strangely enough they they've they've survived the test of time some of the banks and ditches south of this part of the part of the sets of the banks and ditches south of this have been eroded into the sea since the time it was thoroughly sur surveyed in 1933. And so again, we're very lucky to see this. And we do see an image indicating the level of erosion that this site actually suffers, which again, uh, when I used to be out and about, the, these are these are the types of things I used to used to do. And um, I used to be a real, real geek when it came to archaeology. And I'm so pleased that I've got all this stuff now. So I can actually use it and get it out there and publish it and do all sorts of wonderful things with it. So what we what we do look at next is the uh, bulwarks camp and the boundary of the ancient monument as supplied by um, Cadu. Um, and there it is. So this is rather rather interesting that that we've got the area of the scheduled ancient monument. Which actually extends almost over towards Porth Kerry House, and I and I'm I'm not really sure why that is. It might be that there might be some more evidence in the valley that the bulwarks overlooks on the north side, as well as the creek, losing that word, on the right hand side where we've got the Porth Kerry come the Porth Kerry Valley that everybody's familiar with, and there you go, Porth Kerry House, and I always. I always say that another interesting feature of this is that. Now, I like that. And the reason why I like that is that all the indications are that that mound existed before the bulwarks. And how do we know that? Well, I'm going to annotate a little bit. Here we go, annotation. They won't annotate. So we've got pen. And if you think that going there and oh, what is I don't know why the all ah, right. Hang on a minute. Let's uh let's clear that. What you've got is this area here tells me that when they built these Iron Age defences, they actually um, built this feature to take account of this feature here. So that means that this here is actually Bronze Age. That's a really interesting point. And the reason why this is really, really interesting is that the people who built the, the bulwarks recognized did they not the importance of this bronze age monument which would be which would have a relationship with another bronze age monument in westward rise that no doubt we know all about at the end of westward rise well me and richard do anyway and this this is interesting because what this tells me again is the point i made earlier on that the defenses um are less military and they're more to keep um, the roundhouses, um, which may have actually stored goods, or the four poster structures, um, which may have actually kept grain. Um, in other words, the bulwarks itself were, was a great area 
where people brought supplies to keep them safe, usually over the winter months. And obviously the defences are more there to keep animals out and to keep things safe rather than they are um, purely defensive. And if you're going to build a defended site and you're going to def build a properly defended site, what you would have done is actually completed the set of the defences, which would have gone all the way here, something like that. And these defences would have gone all the way like this. That's the what it should have looked like. But we do know that this existed before any of the other defences. So there we go. Stop, stop the share. We're going to go back to me again. Is this sounding okay again? Good. Nobody say anything, but I presume it's sounding good. Uh, fine, right. Cal. Good. So this itself, this itself is something else that I recorded in 1989. Another point it says in my notes, uh, the fort has a good view over the Bristol Channel. This would be a site on a high position with a command in view. On the eastern side uh, and the western side of Palisades. This itself, and you've got the cliff there in the north, is, is evidence of a cliff fall and a selection, a section of collapsed cliff about 15 feet high um, with the deposit of ammonites and limestone and so on and bivalves came to the surface all around the site and this was in 1989 and this was this was 30 foot in length rockfall and 15 15 feet um I, I, I think in depth and probably um, 15 feet in height. I think I think that's what that means. So it's quite a substantial amount of rockfall. And that was in 1989. So that's actually rockfall from the bulwarks itself. And you can get an idea of the amount of erosion occurring on a regular fake on a regular basis to this site. I can remember there was another rockfall in, I do believe it was in 2011. And that was quite catastrophic, but that was a little bit further over towards the caravan park. I remember watching the news and there was some caravans dangling over the edge at Porth Kerry. So next, again, showing you that, that everything that I've been saying, the, the hill fort was much bigger at one time, it is actually true because we're getting this amount of erosion today. And obviously that, that testates to the fact that this is an ongoing process. And one day the hill fort will never be there. And, and, and when, when, when I say about one day the hill fort will never be there, if anyone's ever been to Nash, Nash Point, what they will say, see at Nash Point is that the hill fort at Nash Point has almost been completely eroded into the sea. In fact, the erosion is so acute that, um, that if you ever go to Nash Point, and to be honest with you, it should actually be cordoned off. If you ever go to Nash Point, where the hill fort used to be, the drop is so is so excessive that all you've got to do is just step near the, the edge and you've gone over and instant death. It, it's a really dangerous point, a dangerous place at Nash Point. At the bulwarks, we've got a fence along the front, so that's good. Now, this itself is. This itself is rather interesting because this this explains this explains what we mentioned earlier on about about the fort about the fort within a fort or an enclosure or a settlement within an enclosure. I've put there Roman fort. I but this was back in this was back in the I think about the 19, uh, 1989, 1990 when I when I when I did this. This was actually from an ordnance survey map and. Um, can you actually see something else there that, that I can see on the left? But we'll, we'll go on to that in a moment. Uh, you can see you can see another mound, uh, which is not on the later maps. 
so this this I think this is actually dated from um, the um, late 1800s, right? And and what you've got is that there, as I as I put a Roman fort. I read run description that they said it was a Roman fort, but you know, um, but it's, it's it's marked down as a settlement. So obviously the dates for this are simply that that we've got dates from um, the 50s to about 100 years CE, AD, and then you've got dates to 200, 300 years uh, respectively. And that itself is, is just giving you an outline of what those earlier notes said. But one thing that I've, I've not actually noticed really myself, because I can't remember the last time I looked at this, but look at that, that, that mound there, that, the first one, that was what we were just describing but there's another mound on the left there and that isn't as well as i'm aware um on any plans other than the ordnance survey map now that would indicate another mound which which uh if there's two mounds there then i think the second mound may actually be um, later because it looks like it cuts into um, the bank and ditch below it rather than the bank and ditch leading to it. So stages is that you've got the one mound there and you've got the banks and ditches next and phase three, you've got that maybe. I'm not sure, but I've not actually, can't remember seeing this. That's what that would say to me. And obviously you know you, i know you want me to mention it so we will but i just wanted to focus on the um, the bulwarks but what what we do find is there we go site of pharos castle rock unfortunately when i published my first book in 1989 uh, somebody had the spell checker and they come across the word pharos and the, the spell checker changed the word pharos to pharaoh. So in my first book, it says the pharaoh at Porth Kerry. Um, uh, so obviously I had to update that in the, in the edition from 2014. But the site of pharaoh's castle, pharaoh's castle rock. And again. Again, you know, we, we get that seeing that um, 1800s. And it might actually be missing on some maps from that period because it's not exactly land. I don't know. I don't know if that's right or wrong. So moving on again. Uh, there I am. I've, I've actually looked tidy and I haven't got a beard. Um, and I've actually got tidy clothes. You could tell I'm living with my parents. And this is actually, this is, this is another image taken in 1989, the bulwarks. And again, you can just about see, this is, this is one of the, this is one of the forts, forts, stop it. This is one of the huts, which is further into the site. I think um, this is, this is, this is towards the, the lights that have been set up for the airport. You could just about see between the two posts, a little bit of a curve where the grass is slightly darker. You can just about see it, only just about to see that. And again, we're, we're loving this. We're, we're, we're loving these images. And again, I don't know anywhere that, that anyone's actually published these. Hang on, I'll just, yeah, that one. Okay. I think right yeah this is uh that's i think that's the little bit of a path there um that actually i've got to try and work out the direction of this i'm not exactly sure hang on a minute. um not exactly i think no is that a path no it's not but yeah this is a little bit set back because you can see several behind it uh, you can see, I think you can see one on the left there. And you can see another one on the right. But this is another one a bit further in. 
So there's quite a number of these at, at the uh, at the bulwarks. And what we've got is another clearer one, one over towards the caravan park, which I think we've we've we, we've mentioned again. So we'll look at the other clearer one. And that is is very, very clear. You can you can make out that there. So if we if we get my little drawing thing on for those that ain't ain't wanting to see anything, hang on. We're gonna do a bit of an annotation. Like this is where this is where my art comes in. Uh, as as Kate Kate knows that my my art skills are, are quite advanced. So if we draw this slightly below it, we go around, and we go around. We go around. Just see below that, and that. Oh, Kate, that's really bad, isn't it? But um. That 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 gives you a bit of an outline because it's at a bit of an angle. That believe me, that that is oblong. Okay, I got to get rid of that. God, that's terrible. But you can actually make that out. And oh, hang on, we don't want, we don't want that. We don't want that, and we're going to stop the annotation. So we 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 are clearly seeing that, and it it is, um, it is actually very clear, and you can see the back of it there. Again, the problem is with with this type of angle, it's it's really difficult to do this justice drawing it. So probably best to see it like that. And and this is I've described this as iron hut number one. Uh, this is a round hut like most of the others. But then again, we'll see that it's they're oblong. Um, and the larger type of hut, which is the one with dark green markers you can notice this straight away um but obviously not today that's what my notes say that um dark green because it's uh, it's uh um it's, oh yeah this one here again clearly coming up i don't know if these are lot lots of the same this this is hat number two but again clearly seeing this this exposed at the site and um, again, we're loving this. What we're doing, we're showing it, it. It describes in this as showing the steep iron age ditches. Probably, um, probably these themselves, because this is over by the caravan park side. These may have been slightly improved. But if if I if I may draw this and try to um, do a little bit of annotation, hang on. Okay, there we go, my annotation bar. When you started using the annotation bar. So I think this is, you go down here and it goes up again. So again, a slight bit of an angle, but yes, the, these are very visible and these, these were taken in January, 1989. Um, and there is one thing to be said about this. If you're ever gonna to go to the site, go in the winter months because that's when the bulwark is best seen. I think I think I used a similar image like this when I was publishing when I published this in the Byron District News, but um, it wasn't exactly this one. Again, coming back to these, I know we've got more of the same same type of thing, but this is one of the ones further in the site, and I do believe we've got another image of the ditches as well. I think that's coming up. You can clearly see the light in the distance towards the coast. So we'll come up with that one. Get another idea of the shape. And when we we actually we actually look at a little bit of a, a plan as well, which is a plan showing these some of them at the site. It's quite a difficult plan to make out, which I'm probably gonna have to do a lot of work on. But that there, there we go. And we've got annotation. Oh, oh, did you see that there? Oh wow, that works, Kate. Is Kate there? I don't know. Hey, look at that. I, I just do that. Went straight in. So we've got a bit, we've got a bit of annotation there. That's great. Um, and again, looking towards the light, looking towards the south. Of course, these are much more clear if you go to the site and probably need an update with these photographs. And this is another little sketch of mine and. One of the things, one of the things that I have noticed when I've been to the bulwarks, 
is on more than one occasion, I've seen people metal detecting, right? And um, do, you, do you like my little sketch? It's good, isn't it? So uh, this, this marks illegal excavation at the bulwarks. Uh, there have been reports of illegal work taking place at the bulwarks. These trenches, holes, and so on have been reported on the site. There was an occasion in the summer of 1989 that a metal detector enthusiast was seen at the site. Um, I talked um, to this individual, and the man mentioned and showed me 30-odd um, items excavated lately from the area. The individual came from the valleys. I mentioned that it was no odds to him that the site was protected. So in other words, uh, this was actually in 1991. Uh, uh, oh, no, I wrote this down in 1991, but obviously it's talking about a report in 1989. But people going out there metal detecting, and there's no real protection at the site, but it's a scheduled, protected, ancient monument. So what we, what we are going to do is I'm going to describe something. Um, I've never really, I've, I've never really, um, I, I've never really uh, gone through my notes here. So I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go. So if we if we move on a little bit, that that's the shape of some of them. So this is this is a little bit of a plan going sort of the um, that there's a lot more than this. So a walk up. So I'll go with this description. 1989. A walk up to the top of the bulwarks. Walking about, um, and what you do see is there. There are huts. Um, it, it's my notes say they're they're around huts, but they clearly look oblong. And there are twelve of them. And the larger ones uh, I drew, and, and the, one of the, the one of the larger ones I drew. And you can clearly see this. And this is when I was still using inches <coughs> for my sins. And you can clearly see from that that the these these are not this isn't circular shape anyway. So so I do this, and even back then I was talking about them being used for storage rather than from living. Um, the site is very large, and an aerial photograph will be great for the site. But then again, you if you go taking aerial photogra photography at the site, I think it would be a matter of going at the right time of year and um, knowing exactly when the right time of year is to actually, so you'd have to look at the site, you'd have to coordinate when the when they are visible actually on the ground and then do some aerial photography. So uh, most of my the notes here just discuss sort of um, general sizes and stuff, but if I go to my notes, and uh, we look at this, and basically looking at, uh, you've got, um, you've got seven hundred and sixty inches in circumference, and my translation of this into meters isn't working at this minute, um, and you, you've obviously got the the measurements there. Um, yeah. 275 inches um, to the center. Um, that obviously um, gives you an idea of the radius, radices of, around the site. So impressive these are. Um, this itself, this itself, and again, you can see there uh, that this is pointing in a northerly direction. And, you know, wherever the entrance was with these things, I don't know. But clearly, an oblong type type buildings at the site. And if we again look at this, we could we can clearly see the direction that lots of these are pointing in. Um, and I don't know what that tells us, but obviously when 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 I've explained uh, and examined these sites, Obviously, the entrance needs to point in a certain direction to be able to get the sunlight into the building. So obviously, you've got the north, so the sun coming in from the east. Uh, you might have the entranceway in the east there, sort of along the um, uh, uh, along those sides there. Don't know. So 
what 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 we what we've got from the notes here, uh, my own specific notes, is that this site itself may have existed as far back as two and a half thousand years ago. We don't know if there was anything there. It was created on that sort of promontory that sticks out to the sea, and it's limestone underneath. This site itself finds itself around 20 meters above sea level, 60 feet above sea level. It is in an area of cliff, which is very weak today. Uh, and you can, you can, when you go, when you go along the coastline there, and if, if the tide is out, I, I wouldn't say go along the coastline looking directly up at the cliff. That would be one stupid idea because even when we were recording, the um when we when when we were recording the hill forts along the coast we'd occasionally hear um blocks falling and we'd think right we can't go anywhere close to them our insurance wouldn't cover it anyway um but what what we what we did find is that when we look at the sections and what we will see if we if we if we go back a little bit and if we go back on the plan uh, and we look at lots of images, these sections, you can actually see this from, from when you look up. So when you stand way back and you look up, you can actually see the profile of these. And you might not read this anywhere else, so I'll, I'll tell you from our own research that when, when you would look up, and you would see see the profile of these. You you would look up and and you you'd see the really nice profile on the left, and you'd look up and you'd see the profile of them uh, on the right. Right. What's keeping these in is actually the tree roots. What's what's keeping the bits of of that coast from eroding into the sea and just the whole cliff collapsing is actually the roots. And one thing that we would be seeing is that if i could draw that in where where you saw where you would see the ditches created hang on a minute let's stop the annotation a minute where you'd see the ditches being created and, and this is on the left hand side the the westerly side what you would find is that there would be cracks in the rocks and that the digging into the into the solid rock to create the ditches had actually exacerbated uh, the erosion, which was actually caused by the ditches. So, whenever anybody is trying to maintain these sites, it's a good idea just to keep trees and bushes with the roots growing into the ditches because it keeps the integrity of the cliff line intact. And that's that's one important thing that we realized with our coastal survey that we undertook in uh, 2013. I'm really pleased as well that we that we didn't um, that, that we didn't rely upon digital technology only. What what we did do, we, we actually we actually used uh, slides. So we've actually got a full set of slides of of all the hill forts, bank and ditch enclosures that we recorded along the coast. And that they and some of those images are really clear. They're the images that we took from um, down below, looking in profile. And the ones that are really, really clear are the ones at Lancet Major at Colhill Bay. And the other ones that are really, really clear are Summer House Point. You can clearly see the ditches and you can clearly see where the, the, the ditches are actually um, caused fissures to go into the rock and so so when when i do get the the, the report published uh, i i i'm hoping that i can make a recommendation uh, for conservation measures for these sites uh, and it was a very useful work that we actually did back then so stop the annotation and what we're going to do, we're going to get to the last image. 
and we're, we're, we're going to give a couple of and that'll be my my presentation on the bulwarks completed for today so finishing a little bit earlier than we planned but yeah i'm i'm loving going back over these because we're, we're seeing things that you, you're not going to see see published and now i asked the question of why in the uh, Roman era was it that this site wasn't militarily reoccupied or reused precisely by by those in power it simply it simply was it wasn't necessarily uh, what we do see is that the Iron Age populations of Britain in, in the south mainly and particularly Wales just basically said look um, we'll sign up to the Roman ideal. Some of us will continue living the ways that we've always lived, as me and Peter saw. Um, in the, I think Peter was on my trip when we went to Anglesey and we, we, we saw some roundhouses there. And they were Iron Age roundhouses, which were continually used into the uh, Roman era. And Carnieni, for example, they are Iron Age buildings that continue to be used in the Roman era. So some people had the choice of continuing to live in um, stone roundhouses or earthen roundhouses, or they might choose to build a Roman villa like we've got in Carnborn, um, in Cornwall, and other places in Wales and England and so on. But places like the Bulwarks, which, 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 just, which, which were not practical anymore, um, the, the Roman administration basically said there's a different way of storing and keeping animals. What you've got to do is you've got to build Roman villas and they would have storage buildings. And if you build them in this way, and so the, the hill forts um, transgressed into the villa sites for the same purpose, but in a different area. And obviously lots of these hill forts didn't have water, so they weren't good to manage animals and so on. So they were no longer practical, but lots of them, as we do know, were actually reoccupied um, and, and had a sense of Romanization. I've never actually seen the specific plan of the Roman era building at, at the bulwarks, but it's quite likely that they may have continued to live in roundhouses, but in only a limited area of the bulwarks being there. And again, that sort of thing, why I've used the word Roman fort, I don't know, but... Uh, some somebody met somebody must have in my head must have maybe put it on the plan. And one of the one of the points I'd I'd like to sort of mention, and I don't know how exactly how accurate this is, but I, I put this here for a reason I'm, and I'm going to um I'm going to use it. And Hang on, I'm just trying to work this out. Uh, yeah, I, I've got um, I, I've got some I've got some measurements here, and I think these might re, these might be sort of relating to distant distances of preservation of banks, and. And, and usually what we do find is that the banks, the banks on the right hand side uh, here are in relatively good condition, the ones further in um, and the ones further out um, and in a lesser state of preservation, the further on down you go down the bank on, on the right, right hand side. And it's probably because of the fact that erosion starts at the top. And then obviously debris is filling in the lower ditches and then debris then fills in all the other ditches. So from my notes, it's got um, at least if, if we look at the Ordnance Survey plan. Oh, this is not clear at all. Uh, so if we look at, for example, this one. That's not very clear either. My, my notes in front of me are clear, so I'm just trying to 
get a decent plan. No, that's the best we're going to get. So there, if you can make that out, there are at least four, maybe five sets of banks and ditches on the on the right hand side. Aware of on the left hand side, there's three sets of banks and ditches, and maybe a fourth one on the right hand side. So why did they have these banks and ditches? Is basically, it's basically it's felt that these people were a bit ostentatious. They wanted to show off to everybody else the fact that they they could build such sites like this and in most cases you have a level side and you have a steep side this is what we see at the bulwarks you've got a steep side on the uh, eastern side and north side and, and obviously on the on the south side it may have fallen away down the cliff on the left side it was flat at the atlantic major it's uh, it's the other way around. Its eastern side at Kolihu Bay is flat, and its south side is cliff, and its and its um, west side uh, drops away, and its north side is a bit mixed as well. The 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 one that is sort of um, different is Summer House Point, Boverton Landwick Major. That one has a steep side towards the towards the, obviously the cliff on the south the north side is is it falls away quite a bit the right hand side is a little bit steep and the left hand side is a bit odd as well um and that's more or less from what i can work out with summer house point it was more or less sort of circular in in form whereas this is sort of trapezoidal shape form one of the last things to say be said about this site is that after the Roman era, at this site in particular, it was never really reoccupied. But we don't really can't really be sure about that. But there's no evidence to say it was ever reoccupied. Whereas the the site at Kai of Dunaf, which is outside Cowbridge, that was actually reoccupied in the medieval period, actually straight after the Roman era all the way through into the medieval period. Summer House Point is sort of very similar to that. Um, but this itself, its history and story ends there, probably roughly about late 300s. And then we've got a big gap and then it falls away into history. And it, then it comes back up to us in the modern day and age where we talk about the creek of Porth Kerry. And I, I do like this site, but I got this. I get this weird. I, I, I get this weird sort of sense when I go there. And ac actually, I'm going to tell you something that that I that I've never ever said in public. Right? It's directly about the bulwarks. I I gave a story to. Um, um, I, I used to get invited to do talks to uh, one of the OAP groups uh, when my public speaking was as popular as Pete's. Um, when I used to uh, give talks to this OAP group in Barry, this one lady came up to me and said, oh, my son, Barry, uh, wants to come over to the UK. Um, he would like to meet you. And I just thought, oh, why does Barry want to meet me? I just thought, so uh, that that was it. So. The really weirdest thing, Barry, Barry's dad was an American serviceman. And obviously his mum came back to live here. Um, or she, um, I don't know what the exact story is, but anyway, uh, Barry came over and he said, um, the reason why I want to meet you uh, was because he described the site and it was this one, it was the bulwarks. And he described a dream he had had. And I described the dream I'd had about this site. And the two dreams were exactly the same. And weirdly enough, we had this connection. It, it was over, it was in regards to the bulwarks. Then he talked about yew trees. And I said, actually, 
there's loads of yew trees at the bulwarks. And it's a fact that he really wouldn't have known or read anywhere. And he said, really? And I said, yeah, there's loads of yew trees there. And it turned out that this guy was, um, his dad was actually, um, uh, was actually a Native American, right? You know, I, I was served in the armed force and this guy looks Native American, Barry. He, 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 you know, he looks, he definitely looks it. And he basically started talking about shamanism. And the final thing I'll say today, the reason why I got sort of very spiritual and interested in shamanism um, and all that type of thing and angels and so on was because of Barry, because we had a connection and the connection was to do with the bulwarks. And on that moment, we're going to call it a day. So we're going to ask if there's any questions. And actually, we, we've, we've nearly just done about an hour, which is great. I, I, I'm glad we've done about an hour. And, and, and actually, uh, do, you know, do you know, Kate, right? I would love to do that story on my TikToks and YouTube, but I don't think people would get it. So uh, I, I don't think I'll do that one. But uh, we, we, we are going to call that a day. And um, I would say, that what is popular, as me and Kate said earlier on, is my my YouTube stuff and my stories about the war on TikTok and uh, YouTube. And on TikTok, they they're getting you know a thousand odd people watching them, and on YouTube, we're getting that with with one or two other videos. So if anyone's got any really nice stories about the Second World War, and it has to be about Barry, so that doesn't mean you, Pete. Um, but then again, Pete, if you've got some really nice stories about the Second World War, I'd like to hear them because they can go on my TikTok and other people across the country can listen to them. Um, just, just let me know at the end, right? Tell them, tell me you've got a story that I can tell in a minute um, and I might be giving you a call. Same with you, Richard. And as you're a yank, Kate, you don't count. But um, let's call it a day. And we, you do count, Kate. And, and let's see if there's any questions. And uh, stop. Right. Okay. We've got something in the chat box here and it goes 15 meters. Mm. Right. Okay. Peter, 15 meters. Is that the, the length of the, the roundhouses? That's the length of that roundhouse that you measured in inches. Yes. So that's 15 meters. Yeah. Near enough. 14.79 something. Can I just use some bad language? Right. That's effing huge and that that's that's three times bigger than than the building that I, that I built well not three times bigger about two and a half times bigger that's quite a big building anyway thanks for that pete right okay, okay. uh right again any questions and if anyone's got any stories that they would uh, like me to do phone them about in the week let me know pete anything you'd like to say no no it was fine thanks no Okay, we'll be back here next week. What about I've you? I've been up uh, to the bulwarks and I'd look at it in the past, a good few years ago. Good, yeah, it, it, it doesn't seem to change much, Pete. And Kate, I've asked you to unmute your dude. Um, right. Okay. Um, Anus. No. Oh, there I am. No, I'm happy. Really, I'm happy now. Good, 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 good. Anyone got any second I world war? I've been up there for a few years, but to be honest with you, Richard, um, it is quite accessible because um, if you if you uh, you can park the car nearby and you can just go along the path. No. Um, the, the ditches you can actually clearly see on your right, but however, Richard, I'd, I'd probably go in the winter again because it's probably going to be very overgrown. You can clearly see them. In the winter months, on the path, you can really clearly see them. They're really, uh, they're really, really clear. Yeah, I have been up there for all fifty years. So. <laughs> in a can while, you still hear me, guys. Hello. Am I still online? Yeah, I just Hello. got a few faint. I don't know what's happened. Right, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. You no. haven't been up there for about 50 years. Okay, fair yeah. enough. I don't know what happened then. Something went on. Right, okay, thanks for that, uh, Richard. Okay, um, what have we got? We got Kate. Right. <clears throat> I just had a thought about the hill forts. Yes. That maybe they needed to take stuff up there because of flooding or the risk of flooding below. Think how marshy it is around here. Think of all those creeks. It's a thought, isn't it? 
It's a thought. Well, I do help, Kate. I know. No, I just got it. I just got it. Oh no, chill. Kate, 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 just don't show off, right? I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm not. I just. I've been thinking about these things for so long, and I wondered about oh. the oblong huts. Are they aerodynamic? Are they pointing into the prevailing? Yeah, these are clearly oblong. I can't, I, you know, but, but are they they're... are they pointing into the prevailing wind? Uh, the prevailing wind. Uh, well, the wind would be coming up from the uh, southeast, so uh, the 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 oblong shape of the bottom bit would be taking the wind. Um, yeah, they would be aerodynamic. Our prevailing wind is southwest. Southwest, yeah. It was just a thought. Oh well. Hang on, a minute, hang on, a minute. Uh, hang on, a minute, hang on. A minute. I got to get my. Hang on. Oh. So, how do you explain southeasterly winds? Hmm? Well, then we get them. It changes field. occasionally, but the, the prevailing wind is it's southwest. southwest. But when you get, you get south... north, you get east, or you get uh, northeasterly, southeasterly, it does move around. But the yeah. prevailing wind, the normal wind, is southwest. southwest. Right, so Maybe can I just make this point? Can I make this point? When because these buildings are almost orientated towards the north, north from an easterly direction, can I am I right in saying, Pete, that, that when you get southeasterly winds, they're a lot more dramatic than southwesterlies? They could well be. They could be cooler, yes. Right, cool. okay. So if they're coming from the southeast, surely they're gonna get the uh, warmth of the um of the, the uh, yes. The Gulf, the Gulf Stream. Gulf Stream, yeah. Yeah. But but you're saying that they would be primarily warmer from the southwest. Yeah, well that's the, the prevailing wind. That's the normal right. wind. Okay. Okay. That's why all you the get trees really, are, northeasterly are really freezing. That's when you get the freezing weather. Right. Oh, so maybe they're fear the they've they've discovered or realized that that's where when it gets really bad is when it comes from that way. You know, yeah, that's know. Right, it does. There's it nothing does. on telly. You see, they've got all this time to think about it and observe everything. Yes. Can I can I just say one thing, Kate? You know, your idea about these these hill forts not being in valleys, right? Right. But the, the point is that just just a quick overview: hill forts, right? Bank and ditch enclosures, right? They're not really massively defensive. If you look at Maiden Castle, it was so big, right? Um, it, it's it's a kilometer in circumference around the top, right? And and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's huge. Right, it, it's it's over fifty acres. Right, um, this is Maiden Castle. That's the area within. Right, it's so big. The China defend it. You would need an army. Right, um, it, it's it's not practical. Right. Um, anyway, um, the one thing about Maiden Castle is it, it's raised. It, it, they deliberately had to raise it off off the Dorset landscape, which could get flooded. Right. Um, the bulwarks. Um, is above a landscape of a creek, a very boggy, marshy landscape. It still um, is. The landscape at Lancet Major is boggy and marshy, right? Um, you know, it's very, it's very clay, right? And it could get flooded easy um, at Summerhouse uh, Point landscape because I worked in that. It, when it gets wet, it gets wet. You can't do anything about it, right? So your point of it, the reason why we've got these up um, high to actually... Yeah, um, reason why you have why why they were built why they're there if they're not that de defensive, you get what are you defending yourself from then? And I yeah. I don't know. It just occurred to me how wet it is around here. Yeah, and of course you've got a flat side because you've got to go in and out. Why would you make it hard to go in and out? <laughs> well, yeah, no, yeah, I know that's obvious. I know that's obvious. And the other thing, <laughs> uh, there's another point there, right? If you're trying to defend a site against people and make it defensive. Um, you're not going to have it on the. You're not going to have the entrance on the flat side. No, you're not going to make it easy for them to get in either. Yeah, exactly. Do you know, what, Kate? Right, I have never heard this ever in my entire life. Of all these years, I've been doing archaeology. This idea that hill forts um, are flood idea, defenses. Yeah, actually, do you flood know what refuges. Gonna do? Uh, flood refuges. Flood refuges. We're going to use that one, uh, Kate. We're nicking that idea. It's going. We will reference in the book. It. Yeah. Cool. Along with my nails and wells, is that going in the book? Uh, yeah, your nails and wells is in there. Uh, Richard cool. don't agree, but that's life. Um, 
Uh, Nels and Wells, right? That, can he find us? Can he find us a Nell? I'm open uh, wait, to wait, it. Wait, hey, guys, guys, can you just stay there a minute? I got the vet on. Just talk amongst yourselves. I want to finish. During the war, I lived just outside of Falmouth, and from my bedroom window, I could see the crashes of the bombs dropping on Falmouth, because Falmouth was a major uh, convoy marshalling area where the, when they were marshalling the ships together for, to prepare for a convoy, because it was the second largest natural harbour in the world. Cool. In Falmouth. Cool. <laughs> we need a musical interlude here. <laughs> Anybody got a penny whistle? Where did he say he was going? Anywhere? My mind was wandering. I oh, was speaking to the vet, I think, or something. He's talking oh. to the vet on his phone. Mm. Oh, right, okay. Have you seen his little... YouTube shorts? No. About his, um, you know, his family's war stories? No. Oh, it's really cool. If you go to his channel, go to his the homepage of his YouTube channel, and you click on his shorts, they'll come up. So no Ruth today and no Kathy either. No. Oh. Kathy's waiting for a parcel about me. Or... Oh dear. Oh well, I hope it's something nice. <laughs> I don't think there's there's no real worry about the animals at the moment, is there? Maybe the oh, vet's got to keep him up to date. I think. Yeah. Wonder if he's had a look at the at the newcomers. Ooh, I wonder. If you can go and get yourself one of those Orkney voles to bring home as a pet or let loose on the on the mainland here. Not Did not. you hear about that? You see, oh, there are voles on Orkney that could yeah. only have come from Holland or some such. <laughs> I didn't see anyone I was on Orkney. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they hide. Just as well. Apparently, cats won't eat them. They'll eat mice, but they won't eat balls. But they say they won't eat balls because they taste nasty. Mm. I've never tried one. No, nor me, nor Dormouse. <laughs> and only rabbit once, and then was very sorry I had. Oh, I love rabbit. I'm sure it's great, but some of you yeah. know we have we have our quirks, don't we? Oh, sometimes when it's just not logical. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes our little quirks just aren't logical when you line them up against our other quirks. You see what I mean? Well, <laughs> well the Normans uh, uh, use the, uh, the local islands to actually to uh, farm rabbits for food. Oh, I knew they, they didn't done them. that, but I didn't know it was the Normans who did that. Yeah. Oh, yes. Much better idea than the than the pigeons, I think. I think that's why I think that's why the pigeon thing died oh, out. They have, they, well, that's why they built pigeon coops to encourage the pigeons to uh, to nest and uh, and breed in there. Oh yes, I know, but the I barrier, think eventually that's, that's why they died coop out up on the uh, uh, Mount Pleasant there. Yes, of course.
I wouldn't be very happy if my next door neighbor built one in their garden. <laughs> well, my aunt uh, put used my my hoop with a net stretched over it to try and catch pigeons. Uh, for dinner. She put some bits of bread and stuff there <laughs> for them to come and get, and then uh, she would catch them. Oh, my goodness. But uh, she would she would kill and cook anything. Back in the 70s, I believe there was a, a restaurateur in Cardiff who was caught um, catching seagulls and cooking them. <laughs> And used a, he used a fishing line, apparently. <laughs> not a lot of meat on a, on a seagull, though, I should No, think. I wouldn't have thought. You know, there's not a lot of meat in a spring roll, you know. Mm. I guess. Mm. Be a bit fishy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not nice. Not nice at all. <laughs> My father-in-law was in the Navy during the war. And he really hated it. But the thing they hated the most was having to eat puffins. Oh. They were going back and forth across the North Sea. Um, protecting convoys of ships. Merchant ships and so on, I guess. And now there's a pigeon sat on a pole in my garden, mocking me, looking at me through the window. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I bring a pen in, he takes it back. <laughs> All right, I've just got, I've just been told I've got to vaccinate my entire um, flock of, of, um, of of um, chickens, ducks, and turkeys um, individually. So that's uh, uh, that's fifty odd animals. Great, I can inject them all. Uh, Peter, I know you're good at injecting animals, so you can come and do it. <laughs> right. Okay. So what was I going to say? Right. So um, Pete will will be on next week as usual, and Richard will be seeing you tonight and um, next week. Uh, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Ruth, are you available tomorrow? Oh, not Ruth, Kate. Um, only in the afternoon. Well, when you say in the afternoon, because... Um, say, say sort of one to half one onwards. Right, because I, I, I need to drive, I, I need to be leaving by 3.30. Um, yeah. Oh right, okay. Um, right. So, what is there to do on... immediately? Putting the back, putting the click. Say that again. Oh, what would we have to do immediately? Is put the chairs back together. Oh yeah, if, if I tell you what, if you if you if you, uh, I tell you what, if you if you come over at half two for say half an hour and then help uh, do the chairs. Oh, I think it might take more than half an hour. Oh, right, okay. We've got to find the holes that I've covered up with fabric now. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> um, oh, right, okay. Um, it might not. It might It might be a breeze, but, you know, be prepared. Okay, I'll tell you, if you come over, it's two. Okay. But not before. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and also, Peter... Uh, did you want to come over for your turkey egg? Over where now? To the studio tomorrow. Um, yeah, I'll come well, over for a night. Yeah, yeah you've got to come over for your turkey egg, Pete. You got to. It, it, yeah. <laughs> not often you get a turkey egg. Okay then. Okay then. That's that's what we'll do then. And. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll obviously speak to you tonight, Richard. Um, yeah. Any other questions before we finish? No, nothing from me. No. Nothing else? Okay. No. I, anyway. Um, right. Well, that's it. I'll have to get the spell and a divine right. Um, we'll have to put that there. I've I'll, I'll got that written down. And if we've got no other questions, we'll see people tonight and tomorrow and next week. 
Um, and that's it. So uh, I'm going to call it a day. So uh, Richard, uh, Peter, and Kate, I will. Uh, I'll see you all soon. Yep. Later, Bye. Gators. Bye, Bye everybody. Gators, take care. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you, Kate. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Right, okay, I've got a lot to do now. So anyone watching, sorry about the little delay at the end. Next week, um, 20 past 11 in the morning. Um, I'm just going to check in my chat box. So you go, reminder, 15 metres across those round those oblong roundy houses, those Iron Age buildings were at the Bulwarks Barry. So again, a reminder, 15 metres, 15 metres long, those buildings were in the Iron Age, as recorded by myself in 1989. So that's the 15 metres. Thank you very much for that. Peter couldn't work out my inches and, and, and feet. I just didn't equate. So 15 metres. Uh, that's all I got in the chat box. So one, two, three, four, five. Chat box off. Okay, and this is it. Gone. Take care. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, press the join button below. Thanks for your support. Continually watch. I've got loads of content, loads of different content. A bit for me, a bit for you, a bit for everybody else and other people and whatever. Um, and 15 meters on. May we go and prosper. Thank you very much for your support. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.